Rising Above Adversity, Dave Stevens' unstoppable journey to inspire and achieve. Join us as we embark on an incredible journey with Dave Stevens defying all odds, inspiring millions along the way. In the face of adversity, Dave's resilience and unwavering determination have propelled him to achieve greatness. From his groundbreaking sports career to impactful work as a motivational speaker and philanthropist, Dave's story is a testament to the limitless power of the human spirit. Get ready to be inspired as we dive deep into Dave's unstoppable journey, discover the secrets to his success, and learn how to overcome any obstacle that comes your way. Don't miss out on this captivating conversation as Dave Stevens lights up the path to achievement and empowers us all to reach for the stars. Welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness driven ride. I'm very excited to be welcoming today's guest. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Dave Stevens is a groundbreaking athlete and accomplished broadcaster. Despite being legless, he played NCAA football and minor league baseball. With seven Emmy Awards and 40 years in broadcasting, including 20 with ESPN, Dave is a highly respected sports journalist. He's had tryouts with the NFL and MLB and has been featured on TV networks and in magazines worldwide. Dave is also a motivational speaker. He hosts a syndicated video podcast and organizes sports camps for disabled children. He's involved with various charities and resides in Connecticut. I am so pleased to welcome to our stage. Here is Dave Stevens. Welcome. Wow, with that introduction, I thought God himself was coming down. So uh, thank you so much for that. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Dave. Well, it's so awesome to have you on the show. And what you bring to our audience today is so unique. We haven't yet had a guest that's out in the field doing the thing. And that definitely gives testimony to your broadcasting career. So thank you so much for showing up in the way you are today. Let's get started. Jump right in. Tell us a little bit more about you. Well, first, April, thank you for bringing the satellite truck and everything out here. Uh, I'm in Hudson Valley today. They've got a great event that uh, I got invited to. It's a Make-A-Wish Day where some kids get to be paired up with the Hudson Valley Renegades, experience a little baseball, sign a one-day contract, and uh, get to be part of something they wouldn't normally do. And that's kind of what my life has been all about. Despite being born without legs, and your audience can see out here, Uh, My butt's on the ground out here, but, uh, you know, I decided at a young age that I wasn't going to let my disability or my handicap uh, define me. And I had two great parents who adopted me and instilled in me that I could do anything that I wanted to do. So I didn't know any better. I didn't know I was handicapped. I didn't know I was disabled. And I just kind of lived my life that way. And sports helped me to get where I wanted to be, you know, uh, playing football and wrestling and baseball in Arizona getting to play in college and then the pros and, you know, just open up so many things that got me to ESPN and Connecticut and everything like that. So, you know, I think people might look at me and go, Oh, wow. I feel sorry for that guy. But, you know, I have had this greatest amazing life you could possibly have. I call myself Forrest Gimp because I've done so many amazing things that you wouldn't believe my life story. Ah, I love that. I love what you're doing out there today. That's brilliant. And Yeah, you're right. I love the wording you're using too, because I like to say that for myself. I've grown up with this autoimmune disease, but I never wanted it to define me. And so when we have that mindset, that mentality, we really do just keep going and pushing forward and doing all of the things in order to show up that that isn't what defines us, that we can rise above that. So that's an incredible thing that you're doing. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, tell me a little bit more about your parents. I love that you've had that aspect. And, you know, the fact that they weren't 
afraid to put you in sports, weren't embarrassed to put you in sports. It's just incredible of the amount of support that you had from them. Yeah, I was really lucky because, you know, strike one, I was born without legs. Strike two, I was put up for adoption right from the hospital. But two loving parents, a World War II veteran and a housewife who were a lot, lot older, uh, just thought I was cute and decided to raise me as their own. And um, they were, you know, I think unusual because a lot of parents that have kids with disabilities, they want to baby them. They want to pamper them. And my parents never held me back. They never you know, said, don't, don't go do that, or you can't do that. And it was always in my mind that I could do anything. Just I had to figure out a different way to do it. And so my parents would drive me to practices and wash my clothes and support me and, you know, just let me fail because it's better to try and fail than to sit around and daydream and wish. But, you know, I had dreams at an early age, uh, you know, 14, 15 years old, I had two dreams. I wanted to play professional baseball and I wanted to uh, be successful at a television network in sports. And, you know, first off, those might be unrealistic dreams to any kid, but you throw in the, the fact that I have no legs and, um, you know, how do you tell someone that they can't shoot for their dreams? And, and I'm living proof that with a lot of hard work and a lot of effort that you can pretty much do anything within limitations that, you know, you can do in life. And, and I've, I've failed a lot, but those successes are so much better and so much more worth all the effort and work. And, you know, I'm 57 and I pinch myself that, you know, I've got future Yankees over here behind me uh, hitting balls and stuff like that, that I still get to rub elbows with celebrities and stars and influencers and motivational speakers and, you know, all those people. And, and I hate that, that people look at me and they say I'm a hero or, you know, it's like, I'm just a guy that played sports. I'm just a guy that just wanted to go out and be like everybody else. And to your point, April, you know, this is my normal. Not having legs is my normal. What you've dealt with is your normal. People with ADHD or, you know, severe disabilities, that's their normal. They, they label us, that outside society labels us as disabled or handicapped. But if you looked at my resume and it said, tried out for the Dallas Cowboys, Cincinnati Reds, won seven Emmys, you know, worked at ESPN. And it didn't have that I didn't have legs. You'd think, wow, that's a pretty impressive guy. But then if you say he has no legs, well, how could he do all that? And that's, I think, the thing that blows people's minds. It does. And I, I would love to add to that because when we do have people that tell us, oh, my gosh, I, I can't believe you've done so much and you are a hero and God bless you. And But but the thing is, we we don't feel like this higher than thou person. and yet. There is so much to be said for that when we do show up, when we do go out and speak, you know, you're a public speaker, broadcaster, you've done the things and it's inspiring to those. So when we, when we see, yeah, we're just a regular person and that's, that's how we feel. And at the same time, it's so powerful. Um, we are fortunate in a odd way to have had the experiences and the conditions that we have because we're able to be that light for others. Absolutely. And that's why I hate the terms that we use, uh, you know, disabled. A car is disabled. A human being isn't. And handicap, you want a good handicap in golf. You don't really want a good handicap in life. And, you know, as you know, April, we are the largest minority in the world, but we have the smallest voice. You know, we get maybe a day here or a national disability awareness travel day or something. But, you know, we deal with our situations 365 days a year. And now those words of inclusion have now transformed into an ethnic term or a, uh, a sexual you know, orientation term. And we're not included in inclusion anymore. And we're not part of that diversity world anymore. And we've just kind of been pushed aside. But we are the biggest minority in the world. And the only thing is you can be born Jewish, you can be born black, you can be born Chinese, but... You know, you could jo you know, you can join our disabled world at any given time, you know, so we don't want you to be a part of our world. We'll embrace you if you have to join us. But, uh, you know, I feel lucky. You know, I, I think people might look at me and go, what? And I'm like, I, I'm, I don't wish I had legs. I mean, I don't know what my life would like, but I have done, you know, I played football in Ireland and New Zealand and Australia. And I, you know, go to Super Bowls and all those things. And, and who knows? So. Yeah. I try to utilize my gifts, but now the most important thing is to showcase people how I've lived my life, how others can overcome and how 
we want to be treated on the inside, either as an employer, employee, Mm -hmm. uh, or just those everyday tasks that we go through, those intimate things that you and I have to battle to do things that people don't see on the outside. Yeah. You know, Dave, so much of what I'm hearing is you are so grateful for everything that you have been able to experience, everything that you have uh, now and you continue to experience. And I really love that. When we start talking about overall wellness as a whole and all of the buckets they're in, I've heard a couple of those things and gratitude is one of them. And also the physical aspect. Now you have, despite, you know, what, what God has or hasn't given you, you have continued to move your body physically and pursue that. And so I had a discussion with a guest yesterday and basically I like to say, and, and I, maybe I shouldn't say it, but when you stop moving, you die. And so there's so much about how that part of us is able to help us men mentally, physically, spiritually, all of the above. So I love that you have continued to push yourself physically in that regard. Yeah, you know, I'm 57 years old and uh, I'm, I'm in still in pretty decent shape. Um, it's nice when you go to reunions and all the girls that rejected you in high school are looking over at their hairless, little more bloated guys that, you know, and I'm like, ha ha, you could have had me. But, um, you know, I've torn my rotator cuff on this side once. This one is torn a third time and, and they want me to have surgery, but I can't go with reconstruction surgery and be in a sling with no arm, you know, no legs and one arm for six to eight months. So I just do the best I can. I try to come out and, and just, you know, still move and do those things because mentally, yes, you have to have that that machine continue to work. If we just sit around and get fat internally, we're going to get sick. And, you know, that's all part of that well-being. So, I, you know, I, despite the pain that I go through on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm going to continue to use my arms as my legs for as long as I can. Yeah. So, you know, that's a very good point and something that people wouldn't usually think of, but because you're using so many muscles all of the time, day in and day out, you know, the body is like, it can take a toll on that. So what are some of the other things you do, Dave, uh, maybe on a daily basis or something that you have in, in habitual form uh, of self-care that you do to help maintain yourself? I mean, I mean, everybody asks if I work out. Um, my life every day is a workout, you know? Yeah. I have a wheelchair that I use when I'm in public in the stores and stuff, but like here at the ballpark or here, you know, I'm walking around on my arms and, and yes, it hurts, and I'm not as fast as I used to be. And if people want to Google Dave Stevens on YouTube and see when I used to run on my arms and flip around and do all these kind of things. But, uh, you know, it, it's tough as I'm getting older because, you know, I don't have a, a specialized kitchen or house. So I, I climb up on stools and I'll hop from stool to stool to do my cooking for the boys and, uh, you know, laundry and dishes and all those kind of things that, you know, I'm starting to think about. How could I ease up on, on doing those things? But, you know, as, as, as I said, as long as I can continue to do those things, you know, I don't have people open my doors for me. I, I get in and on my car with a wheelchair. I do, you know, I, I don't want to ever have to get to that point where, you know, I have to rely on others. As I said, I feel lucky I can do what I can do. And until I can't do it anymore, you know, I'm just going to go out and lead by example. Incredible mentality. And Dave, I truly appreciate that about you is that you do continue to, to do whatever it is you can. Now, I recall seeing a video of you and it was pumping gas into the car and you getting in and out of the vehicle and doing it all yourself. And it was absolutely incredible to, to witness that and how you do that. It was awesome. And so you're saying that you do that around the house with the kids. Tell me a little bit, if you want to shed some light on the family life and what does that look like? Well, you know, I've always, I have three sons that are teenagers now, but you know, I always wanted to raise them not growing up being embarrassed to their dad or thinking that their dad was different. And I had to learn to parent differently and adapt to, you know, getting them down and putting them in the, you know, the crib and things like that. But they also learned to adapt with me. So my kids were climbing up and down the stairs earlier than they could walk because it helped dad when we were trying to get up and down. And, uh, you know, they, they, they're never embarrassed to me. And I'm very proud to have given my kids as much of a normal life 
if not even more abnormal because they've gotten to travel with me to World Series and Super Bowls and events and things like that that, you know, a lot of kids wouldn't have those opportunities. But they're also very humble. They don't brag about the things that we do. Um, you know, in fact, I ran, I spoke at uh, Quinnipiac last week to all the RAs, and one of the RAs came up and said, I had no idea. I work with Brady and Tate at Buffalo Wild Wings. They have such a cool dad. You've done so many amazing things. So um, that makes me proud that that, they, that we live the normal life and that, we, you know, they're not too embarrassed. And, and I continue to adapt, and I continue to think about outside the box ways to do things of how to lift or how to get out or how to, you know, when I do groceries and things like that, I have to make sure, okay, I want to make sure I put all the frozen stuff in a bag that I can get in the house as quickly as possible because I'm really slow. So I don't want it to melt. So let me take care of that bag first and we'll worry about the other bags. Uh, luckily, as I've gotten older, I now have the slaves of my sons to be able to do those kind of things for me. But, uh, you know, there is no book of how to live life without legs for dummies. So I, I've just kind Maybe of you can write that. Yeah. And, and I, I've kind of, you know, continued to evolve and to do things. It's just like on a baseball field. How would you hit a baseball without legs? How do you do that? You know, and I've taken batting practice here a lot of times with these guys, and I still do it at my age. And, and you know, you just learn to, to do different things and adapt and figure out balances. And, okay, my butt is down here. And, you know, it's also helped me to understand how to hit a baseball because I know where your feet are supposed to be. So I can talk to kids and I can teach them this is what you're doing wrong. And people might be like, you don't have any legs. How do you know that? I'm like, well, my ass is on the ground. What else am I going to be watching all day? Same for football, same for wrestling. I've learned to, you know, have that advantage, especially when I wrestled. I had the advantage against you leggies because I knew what to do against you and you didn't know what to do against me. So, you know, you pick and choose your advantages sometimes and utilize them to your strength. And, and I've been so lucky that I wasn't, you know, ever put on teams they feeling sorry for me or that kid that you want to give one play to, you know, those kind of things. I earned my way in the teams. Psychologically, it must have messed up the kids and their parents when the coach had to go to those parents and say, hey, you're, this kid without legs beat out your kid in, in right field or as a nose tackle or as a, a wrestler. And, and those parents must go home like, my kid must suck if a legless guy beat him out, you know, and let's move on to play chess or go be an actor or something like that. But, um, you know, I, I just, I love being an example because people judge a book by its cover. And when they find out my life story and they think that they know the things I've done, they don't realize the amazing things that I even pinch myself sometimes, you know, it's too much to list. If, if it was a Hollywood movie, it would be a 17 part, uh, Netflix special or something, you know? Well, and we do have a Netflix special, so we're going to tap on that here soon. And, but I just, I want to, I want to go back to this a little bit because I love your choice of wording. I'd love the, the adaptability that you have had to think about at a young age where people don't usually have the opportunity to do that unless they engulf themselves in, in an environment or, or give themselves something that they have to start thinking differently. Now, mine first started when I went into law enforcement and I had to really pay attention to my surroundings. And that just came to you much further on. I love your uh, example of wrestling because it's so funny. We use so much of our legs in wrestling, right? We use that as that pivot point to grab onto and to hold down the opponent. And yet there was nothing there when it came to you. So that's brilliant. And uh, I would love to see that. That's so fun. Um, thank you so much. Let's go into now. You told me when you came onto the show about this Netflix special, a documentary that you have been featured in. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a Netflix special. It's going to air September 19th. It's called the, uh, the saint of second chances. And it's a story of the owner of, uh, the St. Paul saints and, and a minor league uh, legend. His name is Mike Beck. His dad was a owner of the Chicago uh, Cubs, I believe, back in the day, or no, the White Sox back in the day. And Mike bounced around in the minors as an owner, and you know he got the St. Paul Saints, which became they were like the uh, the bananas team that you see now, that bananas team that goes around and does crazy stuff. But they had a league. He allowed me to play for him. Daryl Strawberry played for him at the same time. Another guy named Jack Morris. And it's just a documentary about the ups and downs of his life and 
the things he, the crazy things he did in baseball. Disco demolition night is a famous night that he created that was a disaster in Chicago and Comiskey Park. But it's a beautiful story about what he overcame, his addiction to alcohol. Uh, he had a daughter that was born with uh, an eye disease that lived a long life but passed away uh, tragically a few years ago. And it's just the ups and downs of his story with uh, my story interspersed in it a little bit. And it's really cool. My friends today were emailing me and texting me going, your trailer's out, your trailer's out. I'm like, what? And, and lo and behold, you dial it up and, and there you are. So it's uh, it's a pretty cool day here to be on your show and also to be on Netflix. I'm excited too, Dave, because it has just been released, the trailer for it, I think four hours ago. So it is an honor to be able to shed a little bit of that light with our audience here today. So I'm going to go ahead and share our screen and we're going to play that for the audience. Here we go. Start into one. Take it. And if it gets you arrested, we've gone too far. Some baseball and thanks to Mike Vec, that came true. Great trailer. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see. I'm really excited uh, just, you know, to to just be a part of, you know, such an amazing story. And as I tell people, you know, I love leaving my legacy, you know. Uh, people, you know, ask me what I want to do. And I want, I want people to be, you know, remember that there was a guy without legs that did those kind of things. And that maybe there will be another one someday. Maybe there won't, um, but I did it, and to be a part of that journey and to be able to prove it now on a you know on a big screen is going to be really cool. Yeah, I I agree, and I I love that leg leglessly. <laughs> I can't even I say it. Copyright but it was... that. I think I may have to copyright. What's your legacy? You know, legacy. I like that so much. I love that you have a sense of humor. I mean, humor is is such a wonderful gift for us all to have when, you know, times are not so great, but just to make each other beam and laugh. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now hey, you can't make father, you can't make fun of others if you can't make fun of yourself. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite known for poking fun and you know, it, it makes, it makes light of a tough situation because again, when you come into a room and everybody's staring at you, if you lighten it up with a joke and you show that, hey, I'm cool, you know, it just gets everybody off the edge and it, and it just makes it, you know, not so, you know, uncomfortable or apprehensive or whatever. Because so many people, again, think they want to handle people with a disability or handicap with kit gloves as, as a boss or as a, somebody in a store or at a restaurant or anything like that. And it's just like, you know, if they could see that I'm just like you and me, uh, you know, then just, okay, let's just be people around each other, you know. Yeah, I, I think my husband likes to say that humor is the lubricant of life. <laughs> so, well, we are going to go into our one sponsor commercial right now. And when we get back, I can't talk. I am excited to learn more, Dave, about your story. So stay tuned. Visit www.drivenliving.com. You'll also receive a free hug. You heard me right. A free hug. An enlightening ebook from the Driven Living team. Discover the science backed benefits of hugging yourself. It's a fill up for your wellness tank. Because at Driven Living, we believe in fueling your journey to wellness, both physically and psychologically. So, what are you waiting for? Visit www.drivenliving.com today. Welcome back. And Dave, I'm going to share with the audience uh, a couple of the photos that you have shared with me, and I'd love for you to describe them. Tell me what they are, what you're doing. You've accomplished and achieved so much. So go go ahead. Um, this is, uh, you know, I used to, Joe Madden used to have me come down and work out with the Tampa Rays. So spring training, I used to go down there and take batting practice, sit in the dugout, work out with the guys. One of those pictures is me throwing a first pitch. You can see uh, they had, you had bats made for me. And then I co continue to go back and do TV and uh, interviews and things for Ability Media or the Disability Channel or my own personal brands. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm so lucky that this kid had this dream and I'm still doing it at age 57. I just pinch myself that I'm, you know, around 
professional athletes and entertainers. And then I get relationships and become friends with these people. And then they come on my show. So, I, you know, I just had Jim Morris, who's the rookie, uh, the movie based on his life was last week, had the village people on a couple of weeks ago. So uh, I'm very eclectic on, on my show, much like you. And uh, just, you know, just happy to be just doing things, you know, at my age that uh, people with disabilities don't really get thought of to do. Yes. Your, your story reminds me so much of Jim, the rookie Morris, uh, and because I've had the pleasure of interviewing him as well. And Chatty Foster, he went blind at 23. So, you know, people who have really just gone above have really accomplished the dreams and just keep going. And it's so inspiring. I would love to uh, ask you a few questions on some of the things that have inspired you the most, but let's move through these photos first. This is you interviewing someone in particular. That's uh, Shaquem Griffin. He was the NFL player who was born without a hand. And this is kind of a cool picture of the only legless college football player and the only handless NFL player. And um, I'm going to be co-hosting a, a Runway of Dreams show with him in September in New York. And he's going to be on stage and all dressed and fancy and such a good kid, you know, just an, an amazing guy that doesn't have a hand that played in the NFL for the Miami Dolphins and played for a couple other teams uh, in Seattle with his brother. So like I said, that's in an NFL locker room. You don't see guys without legs climbing over duffel bags. I had to climb over a bunch of bags to get to him, and all the players are freaking out. And my sons are usually the camera, and I have to tell them, make sure you're tight so we're not seeing big, giant, naked football players in the background, yeah. you know, because, you know, good help is tough to get. But, uh, yeah, I, I love photos like this that just show what can be done, you know, despite what people believe. That's so funny, Dave, that you mentioned that because I, I picture in my mind all of the things that you may, you know, experience that other people would rather not based on where you're at and your, your height and everything. So some of the things that nobody else would want to, to witness probably. And, and it's always fun. Like, again, I'm not doing it today, but when I come out and I've taken batting practice with professional teams like the, the Tampa Rays at one time against the Yankees and I'm in the batting cage and all of the Yankees and here's Derek Jeter and here's all these guys. And you start to feel that pressure because they're all looking, how does a guy without legs hit the ball? So now I'm trying to focus and hit a ball better, but it, it's very humbling that they want to come and talk to me about what I've done. And I'd rather, you know, talk to them about their lives and their mentors and what they've overcome. So, you know, I've played football before, you know, 80,000 people in Lambeau Field at halftime of a Packers game. And I've been all over the country. And again, I know all eyes are on me every moment of my life. People are going to stare at me just because it's our nature. We're different. And yeah. so I've, since I was two years old, I've said, if people are going to stare at me, I might as well give them a show. So I, I'm conscious of it all the time. I, if I pick my nose, I, you know, I know, oh, they're going to say that. But I'm always conscious that I'm in the limelight, you know, at a stadium, in a Target, in a Walmart, you know, wherever, because people are just, they're not used to seeing us. And the worst part is when they come up and they say, thank you for your service again. I have to say I didn't serve and you don't want to, you know, belittle them or make them not go up to somebody next time because then they're like, I'm never going to approach anybody again. And, and it's, uh -huh. it's, I'm like, it's OK. I was born this way. Let me shake your hand. And, you yeah. know, I don't feel sorry for me. So, you know, it, it the looks are fun sometimes. As we talked about earlier, with when I've been with my kids, we hear, oh, is that crazy? Or look at that man with no legs. Or a woman last year in Walmart was pushing her little daughter coming out of Walmart. And the little girl says, mommy, mommy, look at that man has no legs. And the mother says, wow, isn't that scary? And that, and that really bothered me. I don't usually let those kind of things bother me. But again, you, you know, we aren't born with prejudice. We learn prejudice. We learn racism. And so for yeah. that little four-year-old girl, her mother has instilled that we're, we are different and that we are scary. So it's like trying to educate parents and trying to teach people just, just looking at me and how I hold myself and how I get a lot of these disabled kids at these camps to come out of their shell and yeah. to teach those parents as we touched on, let your kids fail. You know, we are disabled and life is much tar harder for us and much tougher. Um, people aren't going to give us, you know, things on a platter. We have to work harder. You know, we have to 
give that much more effort in our training just because we don't want them to go, oh, well, April didn't do that because she has a disability. She's not as well as everyone else to do that job. And, and that's why at ESPN, I work hard to be known for what I did behind the camera and and what yeah. I impacted yeah. for Sports Center, And, you know, those, the Emmys that I won, they're not audience participation trophies. They were Emmys for my work on NFL Countdown and, and Baseball Tonight and all those kind of things. And, it, you know, so I'm, I'm proud of where I've gone and who knows where I'm going. Oh, uh, well, that's going to be one of my questions, but let's talk a little bit about the places that you really enliven and you benefit and you, you stand up for. So tell us a little bit about this photo. Um, well, I'm on the board of Easter Seals, uh, capital region in Connecticut. And this was at our fundraiser. It was a, uh, diamond 75th anniversary Jubilee this year. Uh, diamonds and denim. So what I'm wearing, though, is another part of my world. It's adaptive clothing. So if you look at the jean jacket, that is by uh, Silverts. And the, the buttons on it, they don't snap. They uh, they go together with magnets. And the mm. shirt that I'm wearing under it, it goes together with magnets. So it's oh, it's nice. things that I'm, I'm an influencer or whatever you call it, where people see I can wear adaptive clothing and it doesn't look so bad and it doesn't look like I'm missing an arm or you could put a colostomy bag here or all the things that we don't think about with people who have it way worse off than me. If I can champion that cause and I don't look too bad in that for an old guy. Uh, you know, I'm not a supermodel, um, but, you know, if you, you can have confidence, it will thank you. And it, it just gives you confidence because you, you can't teach a person yeah. with disability yeah. how to get confidence. They have to experience it. And, you know, I'm a show off. I've had a mic in my hand since I was four. So I have that confidence that I've never <laughs> I love cameras. You know, I, I'm surrounded by cameras here at the stadium and, yeah. and everything because I'm constantly doing stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I try to show these kids it's okay to come out of your shell because you're going to fall down. You're going to stumble. You're going to have much tougher life. I want to prepare them. We can't baby them. We can't say it's okay when you get 18. Someone's just going to give you a job. And it's like, no. It's a it's a tougher world for us out there behind the scenes for those with unseen disabilities that battle ADHD or PTSD or all the things that others go through. So that's why, you know, I'm missing legs. I could have it way worse off. Dave, would you say that there's a, a big difference in people who have come into their disability, you know, from birth or at a young age versus the people who obtain them in older age? I think it's much tougher. I, you know, I, I work with a lot of veterans when I play sports or I just taught, I just taught a 10 week uh, media class to veterans at Easter Seals and we, and had them do a podcast and trying to get them involved. And I think it's way worse to have lost something to, to have it and take it away. If you were right-handed and you lose an arm or you lose your legs or, you know, all the people that I've seen, and then they turn to opiates and drugs and they don't get the support from uh, job opportunities or the government and they turn to suicide or anything, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's gotta be horrible. And, and like I said, I, I don't know any other way. This is just the way I've been. Um, it's the way I've had to evolve and the way I've had to deal with a dating life and all those kind of things that, again, you know, you, you grow up and, and most people want to find that, you know, high school quarterback or that cheerleader or that perfect, you know, you, they're not looking for a three foot two. Level. And so we, you know, the things that I've gone through, um, it, it pales in comparison to somebody either later in yeah. life who may have lost a leg due to diabetes or a car accident or paralysis or all those kind of things. But I have people come to me all the time. Uh, I had a gentleman reach out to me on Instagram. His brother lost legs when I talked to him. So we, we did some FaceTime. I mm. talked to him in his bed. We talked about what I've done mm. and, you know, our situations. And I said, Hey man, just, just get up and start doing things for yourself. You know, he's 22 yeah. years old. He's got his whole life ahead of him. So if I can help in any way to give, parents advice to give people without disabilities, employers, you know, I love doing that. That's so inspiring. And I would agree with you. I, I feel the same living with an autoimmune disease my entire life. It, it's just something that I, like you've said, adapted to, and you're used to it. And I didn't, again, want it to define me. I would go to support groups and everybody was much, much older than me. In fact, it was really a rare case because most people didn't, you know, weren't diagnosed until they were in their thirties. And so 
it was a very different situation as I'm, you've experienced your entire life. And so I love that you can be there, that you can tell people, hey, look, I've been doing this forever. It is possible. And Dave, you have your own experience with substance abuse. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, when I was 18 years old, my mother uh, died uh, the day I left for college. And, uh, you know, mm. uh, my, my father died a year and a half later from cancer. He took care of my mother and he never got diagnosed. And by then it was too late. They both smoked. And luck, you know, luckily, I don't inherit those genes. Um, you know, I did find my biological mother and father, which is a horribly tragic story. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, lose my parents like that. I, I, I lost everything, my guidance, my, you know, mm. raw, 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 raw team, all the support. And I turned to cocaine for about a year and a half and just, you know, dropped out of college and moved back to Arizona. And I found myself, uh, at about two o'clock in the morning one time, just coked out of my brain. And I was trying to hold my breath underwater for two, three minutes at a time. And uh, it wasn't a suicide attempt, but it was just, I don't know why I was doing it. And I remember, and I vividly remember that night of just holding my breath and then popping up out of the water and looking up in the sky. And I'm thinking if my teachers and coaches could see me now, and if my parents are looking up there, they'd be so disappointed. This hero, this wonderful guy, this everything that they put me up to be. And I, here I was just this cokehead. And I said, if I could get my scholarship back, I'll go back to Minnesota and do the dreams that I intended to do. And uh, I got clean and sober and I haven't, uh, you know, done anything since 19, uh, uh, 1987, January of 87, moved back to Minnesota, got a TV job, went back to college, played football, went to ESPN and the rest is history. Thank you but so much for sharing that. I can empathize and sympathize. You know, people say, oh, you, you should just quit. Well, you have first, you have to want to quit. You have to have the support around you to, to help you do that. It's not just, I'm going to walk away from this. And, and I'm lucky that I was able to survive. Um, but there's so many more people out there that, that turn to drugs and then turn to worse because they just, they got to get, you know, they got to numb themselves. They just, their lives are so miserable. They've been hurt so bad. And so, um, you know, I, I get those low points still. Um, but you know, I always realize that the sun's going to come up. At least I hope it does for me every day and that I can go out and, and, you know, put on my pants two legs at a time, like I do since I'm wearing shorts and just go out and, you know, put a smile on my face and fake it. If I've got to fake it, because you never know that person that's never heard you speak before or seen you or do those kind of things. And if you can make that one contact or that one impression that will change their lives, then, you know, I'm all about doing that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much again, Dave, for sharing that. That's very vulnerable. It's very powerful. And the reason that those stories are so powerful is because we all are on this journey of being human together. And yeah, we all get to some pretty low points in life. So thank you so much for sharing that, you know, that you've even experienced something like that, despite all of the wonderful things that you have experienced as, as well. And I would definitely say that they far outweigh the negative times. And they make you a better person because of all of the things that I've overcome. It's helped me to, you know, become a better person. And, and, and like I said, I touched on the story. I was supposed to be on this show called Finding Lost Parents on uh, one of those cable channels where they find your adoptive parents. And they loved my story. They flew to the Super Bowl in Minnesota to get my DNA testing. They're like, we're going to give you an hour show. It's going to be great. I'm sitting on a couch. You get that call. We found your parents. Oh, great. Cool. Happy ending, right? They don't want to do the show. I'm like, what? So I connected with my birth mother. We've met a couple of times. Um, it's not, you know, that happy ending. But my birth father, I had a 22-minute conversation with him. He said, oh, you sound like a good guy. Yeah. And I said, I'd love my, my sons to get to know you. I don't want your money. I know you're well off. I'm not about that. I just, my middle son looks exactly like you. I look like you. I just wanted to get to know you. And he said, okay, we'll stay in touch. About an hour and a half later, April, I got a cease and desist letter uh, from my father saying, don't contact us. Don't reach out. We don't want to have anything to do with you. And then two oh, weeks later on Father's Day, I thought, oh, it's Father's Day. I'll text my dad. So I texted him and I said, hey, if you have a change of heart, I'd love to get to know you. He then texted me back and said, you have to understand, you need to go on Dr. Phil. You were a mistake. You shouldn't be here and we don't want anything to do with you. 
and wow. that hit pretty hard. Uh, that that really uh, that was one of the worst punch of the guts I've ever to get rejected twice in your life by your parents. Um, but because I had been through so much, I didn't turn to alcohol. I didn't turn to booze or anything. I just turned to my friends, prayed a little bit more, and realized that I felt sorry for that guy. But I'm thankful that. Uh, his DNA created me and made me who I am because I always romanticize, hey, if my adoptive parents, my real parents saw me on That's Incredible or saw me on ESPN or saw me, they'd be so proud and they'd regret it and they know that they had a great son. Well, you know, Hollywood doesn't always have those happy endings and that's what mm -hmm. life prepares you for sometimes. So, yeah, April, I've I've had the ups and downs and I'm pretty much prepared and now I'm just invested in my three sons and their lives and the amazing things that they do and uh, I'm so proud that they've got two arms and two legs that didn't have to go through any of the things and the struggles that I've had to do. Um, but, you know, I didn't turn out too bad either. Dave, I, that's another appreciation I have for you, because regardless whether what status you meet in the world and, and celebrity aspect that you obtain, it doesn't mean that our family is going to be there for us, acceptant of us. But what I do hear from you, Dave, is that you do have so many loving people surrounding you. And so it's that community aspect that is very, very important and, and is worthy of highlighting. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I have a, a friend in every city. Uh, not a girlfriend, but a friend in every city. So I've been all over the place and you, you reconnect with people with this team or this team or major leaguers that were in the minor leagues at our camps and they're in the major leagues and they're like, there's Dave. Hey, come, come over here and meet uh, Shohei Otani. And you're like, oh, okay. And uh, you're at the Super Bowl and JB Smooth said, let's get down and dance and do all these kind of crazy things. And I get down and dance with no legs with JB Smooth because he's asking me to do it. So I am very lucky that that I have so many people that that accept me. Um, you, you become friends with Patrick Mahomes, agent, Lee Steinberg, who will call you up from time to time just to chat. And and I, yeah. I pinch myself because I'm not name dropping. I'm just I'm just me. I'm just Dave Stevens. And to have those kind of people that, you know, Gronkowski that I can call the Gronk brothers, my friends and, and, and all these people that, uh, you know, just like me for me and they're not using me to do anything other than just inspire themselves and motivate themselves and to see that hey look if, if dave can do the things he can do i don't have it so bad and that's why i hope people can see if they're yeah. bitching or moaning my ankle hurts or my hand hurts or my homework didn't get done or my parents are yelling at me and it's just like man until you walk a mile in my non-shoes you know a lot of people don't really have much to bitch about Oh, you're absolutely correct. And so I want to make sure that everybody knows what you're up to, too. So you do have your website displayed with your name, but I also made it a little bit bigger for those of you who are viewing. Also, this is going to be in the description below. So check out what Dave is doing. It is www.davestevensspeaks.com. That is D-A-V-E-S-T-E-V-E-N-S. S P E A K S dot com. So be sure to check him out, see what he's doing. Now, Dave, tell us a little bit about what all you've been working on now. You said you're not sure what you're going to be doing in the future. Um, I foresee a book. If you haven't already got one, you have the documentary, you're doing public speaking, you're doing your broadcasting. There's multiple things that you're uh, you're you're doing as far as helping others with disabilities, et cetera. So tell us a little bit more, shed some light on that. Well, I'm working with adaptive clothing and putting on these sports camps for disabled kids. I'll be part of the uh, Abilities Expo in Arizona in September, which is kind of like a, a boat show or a hot tub show for people with disabilities with all kinds of amazing products and gadgets and things that will make people's life better. And they're going to start pairing with me to be at these amazing events. So I'm putting on a football camp with an, a former NFL player in Arizona, my hometown, it'll be nice to go back and we'll do it again in Dallas. And I'm um, just trying to get uh, the pro stance ability camps to have people make donations and, and help us to uh, fund these camps that we make free for kids with disabilities to be able to come to a ballpark for a day and experience what that day is like. And, you know, find those other Dave Stevenses and Shaquem Griffins and uh, Zion Clark and those folks that are out there that uh, are younger and can inspire more. You know, I'm uh, fading into the sunset and uh, my twilight years are ahead of me, but uh, I love doing social media, especially doing funny stuff. And again, 
doing things that people wouldn't expect a 57 year old man to be doing on TikTok or Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or any of those kind of things. So I have fun in life. I'm, I'm continuing to, you know, just go out there and experience, you know, fun things that we should be doing and that it should be accessible to everybody in life. Uh, you know, the yeah. East coast is, is a, is a really tough place to live with a disability because there are so many buildings and old buildings that have these fake grandfather clauses that you can't get wheelchairs or walkers or, you know, you can't go to these fancy resorts uh, in Kenny Bunkport and Martha's Vineyard and all those places. They're not, they weren't built for it. They were built for the Kennedys and the Shrivers and all those kind of people. And they, uh, they're not built for us. And mm -hmm. I hope that the, the younger generation, much like uh, us needing to get rid of the old politicians, we don't need 84-year-old people running for president. We need to get youth in there with open minds that have that openness to diversity based on who you are, not based on your sexual orientation or what your nationality is or what your religion is. It's just based on how good you are as a person and how you want to be treated. And as long as I can keep doing that and you giving me an amazing platform to, you know, be a windbag for an hour here, uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, let other people see, you know, you, you don't go to a ballpark and see a guy without legs sitting on the ground all the time. And, and you know, there I need to see more of that out there. Uh, I have, yes, absolutely. And you definitely are such a fun human being to be around. Thank you so much, Dave, for being on the Wellness Driven Life Show. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience today? No, you know, I would just hope, and I don't usually do this, but I see, you know, we live in a seven second TikTok world where most of that stuff is garbage. And I put out a lot of great content and I just don't know at my age how to do all the algorithms and all those things. But you know, we put out great stories about those with disabilities and the ways to inspire. And, and just the other day, showing people what it's like to travel in a wheelchair on an airplane. And I, I wish more people would follow me. It's not that narcissistic. I need your clicks. It's so I can connect more and more organizations and I can have more and more mm -hmm. people come out and see the things that I've done that are tied to Easter seals or runway of dreams with adaptive clothing, or how can I get involved with volunteering for a miracle league or all these other amazing things that are out there. So if people could start following Dave Steven speaks and sharing that and getting us to have all kinds of followers, then we can change the world and we can change the way people view people with disabilities and supposed handicaps. I love that. So I was just creating your handle. It's uh, at Dave Steven speaks. Yes, that's it. So I just wanted to add this to the the screen. I mean, it's it's the same thing as the website, but yep. just as long as everyone uses that social media handle, they're going to be able to find you. That's at Dave Stevens Speaks. So wonderful. And that's also going to be in the description below. So be sure to check that out. I love the TikTok videos that really have some value to offer to a community. I oftentimes don't like to go on it myself because it feels very overwhelming to me. I'm an old person too. I let my husband do that part. <laughs> but yeah, when there's more content out there that really has a lot of value and is meaningful, I love that. That's what we do. I know that's what you do. That's what I do for the show. So also tune in. What is your uh, podcast, Dave? Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about Hardly Up. It's the Geary Stein and Steven show, and it's on all where you find podcasts on Spotify and Apple. But we are a vodcast, so we are on all of my social media platforms. It's, it's Geary Stein and Stevens. It's two other guys, but don't tell them I do all the work. And uh, we get great guests, and, and we've had – Grammy winners and Hall of Famers and entertainers and politicians. And um, we just, you know, we don't get too controversial. Let me get more in the sun here. Um, we don't get too controversial. We just try to keep it to what motivates you. And I try to embarrass them with some funny things in life. You know, we had Potsy from Happy Days and Ralph Malf and Lydia Cornell from Too Close for Comfort. So we're very diverse in uh, our age demographics and things like that. But we're on Roku now and we're on uh, uh, Kathy Ireland's uh, Your Home TV. So, yeah, I mean, my dream has come true from this little legless kid in Wickenburg, Arizona to uh, who knows what's unlimited. So, uh, you know, I, April, thank you so much for letting me uh, be here and uh, allowing me to create your, your uh, you know, maybe we'll get more and more of your guests to be from these fun locations like that. 
I, I think that we absolutely will. I am so excited to have people like you on the show. It's extremely inspiring and we will continue to spread so many inspiring stories with the world. So that being said, I want to thank you again, Dave, and you're welcome for being on the Wellness Driven Life Show today. And for those of you tuning in, thank you so much for watching the Wellness Driven Life Show. Goodbye for now, and we will see you later.